it's no surprise the Lift Pink subscription isn't the most popular membership. It costs you 20 bucks a month or $200 a year if you want to pay that all up front. The only real use case I've ever heard someone willing to sign up for Lift Pink is two reasons. Because you know the Chase Sapphire Reserve gives you one year of Lift Pink for free, and the other reason is for discounts. Which is exactly what I believe Lyft was trying to do. Establish brand loyalty. Because if you have Lyft Pink and get 15% discounts on rides, it makes it cheaper than the competition most of the time, then of course you will ride with Lyft. A win-win situation. You get a cheaper ride and Lyft gets to make some money instead of no money. But the problem with this is you have to ride Lyft a bunch to make this membership actually worth it. So Lyft Pink at the cheapest costs you $200 and Lyft Pink gives you 15% off per ride as of right now. That would mean you have to book at least $1,333.33 worth of rides. And for me, my average Lyft trip in the city type area cost me $15. So basically, just to meet even, I would have to book about 90 rides a year. And that's not including the opportunity cost of missing out on the competition like Uber's cheaper rates. And to be completely realistic, if you don't ride for business, there's almost no way someone needs to ride that much. But I recently received an email for a survey from Lyft. Specifically, they wanted to know about my experience with Lyft Pink. I mostly did the survey for the chance to win a $200 Amazon gift card and maybe to get out of doing dishes, but I'll never tell. But while filling out the survey, I learned something really interesting. A new potential Lyft Pink membership that looks like it could be a real game changer. Even more so for people that don't live in the city. With a cheaper price of $10 a month or $100 a year. And with actually worthwhile benefits. A lot of oldies, but some new. And since the new potential Lift Pink membership has a lot of old stuff from the Lift Pink membership we have now, let's go over what Lift Pink currently offers, then compare them to the new potential plan. So for Lift Pink now, like I said before, you'll get 15% off all types of vehicles you can order, which is the main benefit I see a lot of people taking advantage of. But not only will you get the discounted rates for airport pickups, according to their algorithms, you'll be the priority. So you ride Lift from the airport, you won't be stuck waiting till the last Lift appears which could be a long way, especially at busier airports that aren't these airports for some reason. You also get three free cancellation for rides you order if you rebook another ride in 15 minutes. I'm not really sure why someone would cancel and rebook unless it's a vehicle you don't want to ride in or you're a racist. I'm not really sure in what instance, in my opinion, I would cancel a ride and rebook another ride in 15 minutes. Always thought this was a worthless benefit, because if you maybe needed to change your destination, you can do that with your current driver. But if there's a better reason, let me know. And those are all the benefits of Lyft Pink you can get with the ride hailing services of Lyft. The next benefit is the main reason Lyft Pink is personally valuable to me, but something I wouldn't pay for where the price Lyft Pink is at now. And that is free or discounted bikes and scooter rides in some cities that are on this list. You also get with Lift Pink six free upgrades with six, which is like a car rental type of program I've never used. There's only one location near me and it's not that easy to get to. So I can't personally tell you what I think of this benefit, but most rental cars I've driven, as long as they're not busy, usually upgrade your car. So a worthless perk from my knowledge. You also get Grubhub Plus for free, which is fine I guess. I mostly choose the delivery app that gives me the lowest total cost with or without the membership. And usually that comes down to the coupon they are offering me at the moment. Sometimes the membership savings offset the total cost but not by much like a couple dollars so basically lift pink as of right now not too exciting of benefits except a 15 percent discount that's pretty cool not worth paying lift pink out of pocket in my opinion though but i'll take it when it's included on the chase sapphire reserve but the new potential lift pink plan is something i might actually pay for especially with the cheaper price of ten dollars a month or a hundred dollars a year because it creates more value for me and maybe even for you so with the new potential lift pink plan for the ride share upgrades still has some sort of discount it doesn't necessarily say a flat 15 percent off all rides instead it says membership exclusive pricing it would be interesting depending on the car you request has different discounts like if you order a basic lift you'll get 15 percent off but if you order the luxury lift you'll get something like 30 percent off if they reduce the discounts even further though that would suck like for example if you order a basic lift you'll only get a five percent discount but if you ordered the luxury lift you'll get 15 percent off but the membership for the new potential lift pink would be cheaper so i guess just do the math for you you would also get, with this new potential Lift Pink plan, free upgrades to priority pickups. And they claim it would be a faster way to get picked up for a ride. To me, this benefit sounds like the priority airport pickup, but instead of being restricted to only airports, it would be more generalized, which would be great. You'll have a quicker pickup, which is always good, and maybe even an upgrade if a nicer vehicle just happens to be closest to you. 
instead of waiting for another vehicle 30 minutes out. And you'll also get free cancellations and you know how I feel about that. It doesn't specifically say 3 cancellations. Maybe it would be unlimited, but I really doubt it. I think they would still cap it at 3, so basically the same or better than the current rideshare benefits the Lyft Pink membership offers. All four half the price, which is great, but it doesn't stop there. For bikes and scooters, it looks like they are keeping that for the new membership. It would probably function the same as before. Free 45 minute bike rides if you pay up front for the year, and 30 minutes if you pay month to month. Discounted e-bikes, and 3 free scooter rides. This next benefit I'll be telling you about might be tempting for people who don't live in cities. Like people in the burbs, who orders lifts every so often. Like when you drink too much, or going to an event or a game. And that benefit is free 24-7 roadside assistance. I'm not sure what it would look like, but if it's similar to a AAA membership, for the cheapest membership is about $35. So about a third of what the new potential Lyft Pink membership would cost. So not bad. I just wouldn't use this benefit because my credit cards like the Chase Sapphire Reserve comes with 24-7 roadside assistance. And also I don't drive. I walk in Metro everywhere and sometimes Lyft. So completely worthless to me, but maybe means something to you. And the last few benefits the new potential Lyft Pink membership offers is free car rental upgrades. Which I think would be similar to what Lyft Pink offers now with the free 6 upgrade at 6th. Which is cool but doesn't move the needle for me. And you'll still get the free Grubhub Plus membership. Which is also just fine. So I think this new potential Lyft Pink membership has the potential of working. Or at least better than what they were offering now. I would pay for it. Because of the rental bike benefits and the new cost. But yeah, I just wanted to make this video to let you know what the great minds at Lyft are thinking. But what do you think of this new potential Lyft Pink membership? Would you pay for it? What could they add to make it more appetizing for you? And that'll do it for this video. Subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you later.